Allison Goldie here from Mount Marine Laboratory checking in from the field. Today we'll be highlighting one of our many research programs, the Manatee Research Program. This team studies the Florida manatee, which is a subspecies of the West Indian manatee and one that we are lucky enough to have swimming around our waters right here. So let's go check in with the team, meet them, and see what a typical field day is like. Hi, I'm Carrie Scolardi. I'm a senior biologist with the Manatee Research Program at Moat Marine Laboratory. During non-winter months when manatees are more likely to be in the area, aerial surveys are conducted to determine relative abundance and habitat usage. The sightings generated from these surveys are entered into a spatial database which is utilized by state and county planners when considering waterway management plans. Aerial surveys usually begin in North Sarasota County and continue all the way to the south of Sarasota County and into Mayaka River. When a manatee or group of manatees is spotted, the observer marks the location on the map, notes the presence of any calves, and describes the behaviors that can be determined by air. Meanwhile, the team on the water makes observations from the research vessel. Whenever possible, aerial and boat-based surveys are done simultaneously to maximize the effort on the water. My name is Christina Now, and I am the photo ID technician. I'm Sherry Barton, I'm a senior biologist. And I'm Jennifer Johnson, and I'm a staff biologist, and we're part of the Manatee Research Program here at Moat. While we're out here doing field work today, we're also coordinating with our co-worker, Carrie Scolardi, up in the plane. The teams communicate via text messaging. So after the surveyor flies specific areas, they send a photo of the marked up survey map to the boat crew. The boat crew can then decide which sightings will be their best options, given weather conditions and where they currently are located on the water. In each location, the boat crew begins by taking environmental measurements such as wind speed, air and water temperature, water salinity, Beaufort or sea state, and weather. As you can see, Sherry and Connor are taking our environmentals that we collect at the beginning of each sighting. Sherry is taking the salinity with a refractometer, measuring the amount of salt in the water. And Connor is taking air temperature. He's recording wind with an anemometer. And we will also take water temperature as well as cloud cover and photo conditions and Beaufort, which is the sea state. One of our main projects is photo ID of wild manatees, and that's what we're out here doing today. As aquatic mammals, manatees have to come to the surface to breathe every few minutes. So this gives researchers an excellent opportunity for an up-close view. Here you can see Christina and Sherry. They are taking pictures and recording data of the manatees that we see. They're recording such things as size class and whether an animal is with a calf, as well as documenting their scars and tail mutilations. Photo identification is a research technique that is commonly used to identify individual animals over time. Unique scar patterns on the manatee's tail or body generally come from boat collisions, but can also be a result of entanglement in fishing gear, cold stress lesions, and fungal infections. By documenting these manatees, researchers are able to estimate survival and reproductive rates, create comprehensive life histories, pinpoint movement, site fidelity, and habitat use, and gain a better understanding of both intra- and inter-specific associations. As you can see, we've got manatees close to our trolling motor, which we use when we're operating around them. However, our trolling motor is currently off and we won't turn it back on until we are a safe distance away from them. The water was clear, the seas were calm, and overall it was a great field day for the manatee research team. From the air, Carrie spotted over 100 manatees, while the boat crew observed seven total sightings, with a few groups of six or more and a couple sightings with just one or two animals. 
Today's flight was an index or hotspot survey over established high concentration areas, but at least once a month an extended survey will be flown to cover the entire county. Though Sarasota's manatee population is generally greater in the spring and fall when animals are transitioning between winter and summer sites, peak summer numbers are usually around 100 to 130 individuals, so the team was happy with today's count and considered the survey successful. Thanks so much for tagging along on our manatee research field day. I hope you learned a lot about how our team learns about manatees populations and behaviors to help protect this local vulnerable species, the Florida manatee. If you are ever fortunate enough to see one in the wild, please remember to practice safe observation, meaning you can watch one from afar, but please don't feed, give water to, or harass any of those wild manatees because we want to keep them as safe as we can. Also, if you're out there boating, please observe those slow wake signs. They're there for a reason, not only to protect manatees, but turtles and dolphins and other wildlife out there as well. Uh, so we hope to see you for the next From the Field. But until then, this is Allison signing off.